Today we want to look at variables and let's discuss why we need variables in the first instance. After that, we are going to use the variables for a lot of things. So let's look at why we need variables. So let's say we have an input like this. And this input, let's say is of type number. For now, we'll be, we'll be dealing with numbers alone. As time goes on, we're going to look into other things as like text or other things aside numbers. But for now, we will limit we will limit what we are doing to just numbers. So let's say we have an input. That input has an ID called first. And let's go to our script now, to JavaScript. So we want to use JavaScript to place a value inside this input. So let's call on the ID. So let's say we have this. So you know I said in our last class that JavaScript has the ability to perform arithmetic operations. It will automatically calculate this thing and place the results inside this input. Let's sum that together. So the result is 19. Now we're going to move forward and do something now. We will create another container. Let's create a div this time around and give it an ID. We call it second. So we're going to use JavaScript now to say whatever this is, whatever the result of this is, multiply it by two and place it inside this container. Whatever the result of this is, multiply it by two and place it inside this container. So to do that, we say v dot inner text equals to. Seven, oh sorry, seven multiplied by three minus two. So we want to multiply all of these things by two. So let's put that in the brackets and say multiply by two. Are we following? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what you're saying is multiply all of these things by two and place the result inside this div. Oh sorry, the idea of the div is second. So let's go to the browser and say so that's 38. Let's add two more containers. I will create maybe h1 and give it an id and call this third. Then I want to say multiply whatever is there by 10 and place the results here. So, I'll say third dot in our text equals to seven multiply plus seven multiply by three minus two multiply by ten. So lastly, let's add one more container now. And maybe let's make it a text area and give it an ID. This is fox. So this is the last one. So let's say fox. That inner text equals to seven. Seven multiply by three minus two. Let's say one to multiply by twenty now. So get to the browser. We have these results. Any questions so far? question okay well let's look at the problem with this approach no question sir okay sir let's look at the problem with this approach the problem is that if let's go back to our thoughts you know these are starting points here we are multiplying the starting point by two and we are placing the results inside this 
the same starting point we are multiplying by 10 and we are placing the result inside this then we are multiplying this by 20 and we are placing the result inside it the point is that whatever this is multiply by 2 put it in multiply by 10 put it in and multiply by 20 put it in so if i wake up tomorrow and i decide to change this let's say i try to change this to 4 if i wake up tomorrow and i decide to change this to 4 then if i want it to still work it means i have to change this to 4 right are we getting it Hello, yes sir yes yes sir. Alexa, Mr. Bissi. Try and get me. Share on your way. Yes, sir. I am, I am with you. I am seeing what they are doing. Okay, like, I don't think we are explaining how we need to be changing those values. We need to be changing. Okay, so. Mr. Bissi. Probably it's network. Probably it's network. Oh, he has left. Maybe we should wait for him. He has left. Let's move on. Uh, he might be trying to join with his system. Okay. So, what we are doing here is if we change this to something else, then we need to change it here. We need to change it here. We need to change it here. So, this poses a problem. So that if you forget to change it at a point, let's say we forgot to change this here and we left I was going to leave it as oh no, let's say we forgot. So instead of instead of four, then it's going to affect the result. It will. Mr. BC. Hello, I'm with you. Yes sir. So let me quickly go back to what I explained when you were away. Okay. We have this. Get whatever is there, place it here. Then whatever this is, multiply it by two and place it here. Then whatever this is, multiply it by ten and place it here. Then whatever it is, multiply it by twenty and place it there. Do you understand that part? Sir? Yes. Okay. Now the next thing is, we are not saying that let's assume we change this to four. If I still want my app to work the same way then it means i need to change this to four right because what we are doing is we are saying whatever is here multiply it by two then multiply it by 10 here then multiply it by 20 here do you get it yes all right so, so it means we need to change it at every location now let's now assume we forgot to change it at one of the locations let's say we forgot to change this here then it's going to be a problem because it's not going to work as expected so this is where variables come in this is where variables come in variables are container that you can store values they are like boxes then you can store values inside that box again okay. variables are containers that you can store things so whenever you need that thing you can call on that variable i'm going to see how that helps solve this problem so let me comment this and go straight to variables. Then when we are done, we will now see how variable helps us to solve this problem. So to create a variable in JavaScript, use this word VAR. When JavaScript sees is a keyword. Remember I said it in our first class that when JavaScript sees keywords, it automatically knows what to do, right? Have you now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, VAR, when JavaScript sees this word VAR, immediately it creates a container for us. So, inside this container, and next is you need to label, it's composer in JavaScript that when you create a container, you need to label the container. So, let's label the container. The label can be any name of your choice. So, here I will call it maybe container, let's just call it container, but it can be anything can be anything now again when javascript sees var it creates a container the next is the label on the container then you can now choose to insert values inside this container so let's say try so what i'm saying is i'm telling javascript to create a container and i'll label it container let's use another name 
I think this controller might make it a bit confusing. Let's call it A or something. So I'm saying JavaScript should label that. You can call it container. box. Yes, sir. We can call it box. Okay, box. Thank you, sir. So I think JavaScript should label the container box and insert tray inside this box. So what happens is whenever we call on box now, it will put the value there. So when we say alert box, it's your alert tray. It's your alert tray because that's what is inside that box. Then if we say alert box plus two, it's your alert five because that's three plus two. If we say we say second that in our text equals to box times seven so that becomes second you know this is second that's in our text if you now say three times seven is twenty one so to place twenty one inside this D any question uh, it's clear. Okay. So what happens is whenever we use box, it's going to be it's going to put this value there. So let's see how this helps us to solve this problem. So let's change this back to three. I think we have to turn here the other time. Good. So let's get a box or a container. We can call it num and say num equals to 7 times 3 minus 2. Oh. 7 times 3 minus 2. So when we say first dot value, instead of saying this, we say first dot value equals to num. So this is the same thing as saying first dot value equals to 7 times 3 minus 2. Then instead of saying 7 times 3 minus 2, this becomes num times 2 then this becomes num times 10 then this becomes num times 20 any question show you what no question sir now this will give us the same results but there's one big advantage here if I wake up tomorrow and I change this to 4, then it will automatically reflect in all of this. Since this is num and num is this, then num now is automatically 7 times 4 minus 2. Then again 7 times 4 minus 2 times 2, 7 times 4 minus 2 times 10, 7 times 4 minus 2 times 20. So I don't need to change it at too many locations, I only need to change it here. And once it is changed here, it will automatically reflect in every other location. Do you understand? Check out this watch. Yes, sir. So let's look at the rules that guide variable declaration. There are some rules that guide it. I will need to obey these rules. Rule number one. You see, this rules, let's say, let's discuss what I mean by rules that get variable declaration. Let's say I have a variable like this. These rules that we're about to state, they affect the label you can put on your variable. They affect the labels that you can put on your variable. You can't just use any label. Well, it's good that your labels are descriptive enough that you make your labels to be descriptive. That is to explain what is inside there. Imagine I want to create a variable to stand for number of students in class today. I can say variable students in that's how variable students in today's class. Something like this today's class equals to so this is descriptive. This is very descriptive. The advantage of making it descriptive is that in the future, 
when you see this variable name you, you automatically know that oh these two two stands for students in today's class you don't start thinking about it because imagine if i just put a equals to if i say variable a equals to then let's say after a year if you get back to this same code you may not know what a stands for you may not know that a stands for the number of students in class on the day you wrote uh, on the day we uh we wrote this code you may not know you may not remember so you may start sucking your brain to pick it up but if you make it a bit so descriptive then it's it's good please let your variable name to be descriptive i like using an example uh, imagine you have two containers in your kitchen and you didn't label any of them or they are not properly labeled imagine you have salt in one and you have soap detergent in another if you are not careful you might mistakenly cook with the soap but if they are well labeled then it will help it will help so please label your container appropriately but then let's look at some of the issues why is good that you make your variable names to be as descriptive as possible there are some names that you cannot use rule number one this label must not be a keyword meaning i cannot say variable var because var is already a keyword so the label on your container must not be a keyword number two the label on your container must not start with a number and of course it cannot be a, it cannot even be a number alone and it must not start with a number number can be anywhere else except the beginning it must not start with a number rule number three it must not have special characters except dollars and underscore it cannot have special characters except dollars and underscore what that means is i can say variable my student's name this apostrophe is a special character this hyphen is a special character so your variable name this label must not be must not have special characters except dollars and underscore meaning those are the only two special characters you are allowed to use i can use dollar and i can use underscore i can say my of course i can't use this apostrophe and i can also use dollar those are the two special characters that you can use then another thing is it must not have spaces in between your variable name must not have spaces in between that means this space with so back and error is not going to make it work it must not have any space meaning i have to remove the space do you understand it yes okay let me go over the rules again number one it must not be a keyword number two it must not start with a number number three it must not have special characters except dollars and underscore number four it must not have white spaces it must not have any space so those are the rules to yeah the rules are also in that book you can read the rules there so that brings us that creates a new problem it brings a new problem because since they can't have spaces in between it means we need to write these things together let's say i want to create a variable that would be like um let's say variable variable my number of check This basis we make it to back error is going to give us error, so we need to remove this. Okay, let's say my number of chests. So now this will this will work fine. But then the problem is that sometimes when you remove these spaces, it may not look meaningful, or it may even give you another meaning entirely, different from what you intend to. Um, sometimes when you combine words together it gives you something else entirely uh, let me give an example I think I used an example in that book 
Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to look at examples that we can use. Oh, the one in that book. I'm trying to recall the one in the book. I'm unable to pick an example, but then sometimes when you add, when you remove spaces in words like this, it gives you different words entirely, like a different meaning entirely. It gives you a different meaning. Entirely. So, which may be confusing to you or other developers. You know, when you are building application, most times you don't build applications alone. You you collaborate with other developers to build your application. Most times, you collaborate with other developers. So, if they are not well spaced, or if you remove the spaces, the spacing between these words, then they might misinterpret it, or they might think it's something else entirely. So, how then do we solve this problem? This brings us to what we call the casing system. Casing system. So. We have numerous casing system, but in this class, we'll be considering just like three of them. Number one, we are going to be considering what we call the Camel casing. Uh, okay, let's look at Pascal casing first. Pascal casing, the Snake casing, Snake casing, and the Camel casing. So, we want to look at this today. Pascal Camel Snake. The first one is this. The Pascal Kissing says that whenever you are combining many words together, you must start the beginning of each word with a capital letter, with an uppercase. The beginning of each word must be in uppercase. That means this must be an uppercase. It must be in uppercase. Number is another word. It must be in uppercase, the beginning. Off is another word, it must be in uppercase. Cheers is another word. The beginning is the first letter must be in uppercase. Any question? No question, sir. Yes, sir. No question, sir. So with this, when anybody sees a capital letter, the person will automatically know that oh, this is the beginning of another word. So that makes it easier to understand. So that's about the Pascal case. Each word starts with an uppercase. The next is the camel casing. The camel casing is very similar to the Pascal casing, except that in camel casing, the first word starts with small letter, it starts with lowercase, but every other word starts with capital letter. So the first word here is my, it starts with small letter with a lowercase. Why every other word? Others will remain the same except the first word. The first word starts with a lower case. So that is the camel case. Let's go to the third one, which is the snake case. In the snake case, you separate the words with an I L with an underscore. Remember, you are allowed to use underscore. So in snake case, you separate the words with underscore. Let's do that together. So, most times you usually have all the words in small letter, but you separate them with an underscore. Something like this. So, we have this my number of chairs. So, you separate the words with underscore. So, once you see an underscore, you know that okay, this is separating two words. Show you one. Shani Bailey. Yeah, uh, Oga. Yes, sir. For the for the snake casing. Yes, sir. Will it still work if we combine capital letter with the underscore? Yes, sir. It will still work, sir. It works. Okay. Now, this whether Pascal you can use any of them, whether Pascal, Camel, or Snake. But then they are in programming languages or in the world of development. We call some things conventions. Let's discuss what meaning of conventions. Conventions are practices in the community, in a, in a particular community. Like they are norms. 
of the community. If you don't follow conventions, your code will still work. But it's not good. It's good that you follow conventions because that's the norms of that community. Like it's usually like an informal agreement. Informal agreement in that yes. community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in the JavaScript community, the convention is to use camel casing. Like I said, if you use Pascal casing, your code will still work. If you use snake casing, I call this snake, snake, sorry, snake. If you use snake casing, your code will still work. But in the community, the convention is to use camel casing. It's like there's no written agreement that it must be camel casing, it's just like informal agreements. So when you see other people's codes, you see, I realize that it's also in snake or most people's codes. You realize that those codes are also in camel casing. So I strongly advise that you write your own codes also in camel casing. Not because they won't work, but to follow conventions. As time goes on, you're going to be seeing other conventions in the community. And it's good to follow these conventions. When you follow conventions like this, it becomes easier for other developers to work with you. Because that's what they are also using. So when they see your code thing, they get along easily. Uh, for instance, in the Python community, it's usually snake casing. Maybe because Python itself is a snake. So in Python program, it's usually snake casing. But in JavaScript community, we use the camel casing. And please, you two should use the camel casing. So for that reason, I'll be changing this to camel casing. Any question? So we move this. We move this Pascal. We move this snake. So we have this camel. Let's move up. So whenever you create a variable and it involves many words, you combining many words, then please, you use the camel casing. Use the camel casing. Now, we want to go to a new topic. So far today, we've looked at variables, we've looked at, we've looked at casing. We want to look at JavaScript functions. JavaScript functions. And that's where we're going to stop tonight. Events and functions. Okay, events and functions. Now remember in our first class I said JavaScript allows you JavaScript allows you to be able to build what we call interactive web page. That is a web page that your users can interact with, not just a dummy page. So with the events and fun functions that we're about to look at, you will understand more of the interactive web page. But then let's first look at the meaning of the word event. Uh, by your understanding, what do you understand by event? Hello? Party me. Party. Uh, funeral at wedding. Okay. <laughs> Mr. VC. <Missy. laughs> <laughs> it's it's just like an occurrence. Good. Okay. So, Mr. Blessing said party. <laughs> so let's let's host the party in JavaScript. Uh, okay. In this case, as you said, event is an occurrence, and that's what we want to do now. What we want to do is we want to tell JavaScript that if something occurs, then we want to make something happen. If so, if this should occur, if this should happen, then do something. If another thing should happen, do something else. If you get to some website, if you're about to leave the website, they will tell you, please don't go. Something like, uh, before you go, can you can you let us? Or something like that. What they are doing is they are monitoring you. And they are trying to say, oh, whenever you, this occurs, whenever you're about to leave this page, then this should happen. Whenever the user performs this, then this should happen. So, we call these things events. And let's, let's create some containers HTML containers together let's see we have uh, we have a button this is a button 
and when we click on this button we want to alert it so we just say maybe click me so we can now add an event to hit remember what we want to say is when we click a bit that's an event when we click that's an event so you had an event events usually start with on sorry a second please Please, uh, let's continue. Event usually starts with on. So, what was it is when we click on click, that is when we click on this button, then do something for us on click. So, let's say alert five. So, let's go to the browser. We click on this button. Can you see the five on the screen? Can you see five on the screen? Yes. Okay. So when I click on yes, it sir, again, yes, sir, yes. it's your alert five. So when you click on it again, it's your alert five. We can use other events. We have on mouse enter. That is, whenever my mouse enters into this button, I don't even need to click. Once my mouse enters into this button, then I last five. So I don't need to click. We have five. Let's close it again. We have five. We have five. So we have a lot of events. Events are usually categorized into two categories. We two broad categories. We have the key events. And the mouse events. Key events and mouse events. The key events are those things that you do with your keyboard. The mouse events are those things you do with your mouse. On click, you click with your mouse, right? Abina. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So it's under mouse events. You on mouse enter is also under mouse events. But let's look at some key yes, sir. events. Let's add some key events. Uh, I will quickly talk about an, an output command before we proceed. Then we go back to events and output commands. On one output command, we call it console log. This log tends to be console. Don't worry, you understand more about this console later. When we run this code on the browser, this 12 is locked to the console. So, immediately we run it, of course, 12 is locked to the console. But then, the question is, where is the 12 on the screen? It's inside the console. So, where is the console? To see the console, right-click on your keyboard. Uh, right-click right on your browser. Click on Inspect. Inspect. Then you will see console. Go to the console. Console. So, we have this 12. We will talk more about the console later. Okay. Four. So now let's use a mouse. Ah, uh, sorry, a key event. We've been using mouse events, so let's use one key event. So we can say on key down. That is, whenever my key is down, do this for me. Console log. Uh, it so whenever my key is down inside this input when I'm, other, when I'm inside this input and my key is down that is i press any key and that key is currently down you know when you press a key the key goes down right yeah so as long yeah. as that key is down then it's going to console like it so let's do that together so i'll go to this place now and i'll press a key and you see it's logging it to the console shall we oh to log it 13 times let me Take this so that you guys can see it. Shall we? Oh, it's in log here, log. 
can group things together so that you have oh the log the 23 times see my thing only not in your go up you will see you see that it keeps logging into the console abby yeah so that's a that that's a key event on key down we also have on key up on key hop means uh when you press the key you know the key goes down but immediately you release the key it comes back up immediately then it's it's going to perform whatever you want it to do what i mean is this so i can log it by now if i press the key the key goes down the key goes down then immediately i release it it comes back up so it calls the on key up So it comes back up. Any question? Any question? No question so far. Okay. So it's logging it to the console. Now think about the mole, don't want me to go low. The key is currently down. And the people could log it, Abby. Yes, sir. And the people could log it, Abby, now. Yeah. Because the key is still down. Think about your one because the battery also keep by. Oh, my log it. She's supposed to log it. But you come to your work, the key is now up. That is on key up. But can you key down? The people who are on key down, you can you see log it. Can you key down? Can you see the difference between on key down and on key up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, we've seen that. Let's now go to functions, and that's where we're going to stop today. JavaScript functions. Now, you won't be writing codes here. Okay. You want to look at functions, and that's where we are ending off tonight. Instead of writing codes here, you won't be writing codes here. It's going to make your code look so rough. It will make it look rough. So instead, you write your codes inside this place. Let's say I have to pay about it. This console log it, you won't write it here. We still want to do the same thing, but instead of writing it here, you don't want to do that. Uh, in, your, in your CSS, you did inline CSS. I've been now. And you do and yeah. you also did internal CSS. Same way. Yeah. This is inline JavaScript. You want to move from inline JavaScript to internal JavaScript. So instead of putting this here, you go to your JavaScript to you create a function. To create a function, you write a function. Is there an external yes, uh, there JavaScript? External. We get there as we proceed, but not now. We get there. So to create a function, you first write the function keyword. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Abisi ask a question. Mr. Abisi ask again. Yes, I yeah. said yes. External JavaScript, but we get not tonight. We get there as we proceed. Okay. Right. So, to create a function, you write the function keyword. Then you give it a name, any name. This name must follow those for rules that I gave you for variable declaration. It must follow those for rules. So next is a function must have parentheses at the front. Then what do the function to do? This parenthesis differentiates from variable. To create a function, you write the function keyword, then the name of the function, you put parentheses after it. Then whatever you want the function to do will be within this curly basis. Any question? Explain. Okay. So I can now put the console log it here. So, like it. so what I want to do is whenever I, my key is up, I want to do whatever is inside this function, right? I've been now. Ah. So I get there. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right on. Sir. Whenever my key is up, if I just push and go to one function, so somehow I need to find a way of hooking this my funk into this on um, key. Up. I need to bring them together. So to do that, I will just put the name of the function here. My func. So what that means, whenever my key is up, 
run all the codes inside this my form and it's going to do all the codes there so you still have the same results any questions before we run it off any question at all no question for now okay now um let me give us a task to do an assignment like we did today the first review uh, we revised the last class then we added some things so as in the next but we first revised this part of events and functions then we add some things now this is the assignment create a button when i click on that button like a button you know this is a button now This button has 50 inside it. When I click on this button, the text inside that button will change to 10. I come again. Click a button. When you click on that button, the text inside that same button will change to 10. You know this is 15 inside it. 15 in the what the text inside it will change to 10. Any question on the assignment? It will change to 10. Yes. Other question. Okay. Uh, I will send the video of today's class to us later. Send it to us. Okay. Thank you very much.